um, uh, you're forced to use AI or, or you get left behind. And I noticed in the New England Journal um, and a, a couple of other medical publications that, and I'm curious if this is happening in other spaces, but I, I still pay attention to medicine quite a bit. I noticed that there's a, there's a FOMO going on where, you know, un, unprecedented in a sense that New England Journal has had all these uh, articles about, you know, GPT and doctors, how do we use this thing? Is it good? Is it bad? Is it dangerous? You know, what exactly? And it's really a, an interesting kind of, uh, you know, uh, paradigm. You know, I've been spending a lot of time writing this thing called BookGen, which you can find on my GitHub, which is a little tool that writes a book, and it writes a 200-page book for you based on GPT. And to my knowledge, there's no such library like this out there. And I even um, put out a uh, book on Amazon uh, using it. And I'm just finishing, putting the finishing touches on like this 2.0 that uses GPT-4. And I have to say the writing is, is marvelous. It, it's still, you know, not a great book, but, but the writing is, was, you know, I, I, was a, I was a lit minor that, that qualifies me to do anything, but I love books, I love reading. And, uh, you know, uh, it, it writes beautifully uh, for, for what it's worth. It, it, its big issue is the stateless model of these LLMs where the LLM is, is doing a very big calculation. It's, it's not remembering anything. It can't remember anything. It's just not built to do that. So you have to sort of do all these tricks that I mentioned Langchain earlier. Um, you know, but there's a number of other tricks and they're all pretty well known in the art, even though we, I see publications every day that kind of make me tear my hair out that um, act as if those uh, innovations are brand new when they're, they're not brand new. They're, they're mostly uh, stuff that people have been doing for, for close to a year now. But it's good that it's coming out in literature and everyone should be able to use these tools effectively. But, you know, basically using, you know, different techniques that, that people have picked up on there. There are ways to sort of get these LLMs to understand state to some extent, but they'll never really understand state. Anyway, I'm getting a little sidetracked on the technology there, but I, I'm hoping and I think that AI will, will have a bubble phenomenon as big or bigger than the Internet, which is saying a lot because the Internet bubble was was very, very unprecedented. And I think it took Microsoft more than 10 years to recover its internet bubble price. You know, most stocks never recovered. The median stock never recovered its internet bubble price of 2000. So to a lot of people, this was a defining moment. To most people today, we don't look back on it as that important. But I think that, you know, <laughs> if you look at some of the wealth that was created back then, a lot of it was, you know, we look back and call it undeserved. But, you know, if you think about the market from the Buffett perspective of Mr. Market, you know, shouting prices at you every day. If you get a price that's really wild, you, you're sort of tempted to sell. So, you know, one of the big things about bubbles that we've seen in the past is you want to avoid the bubble popping, but you also kind of want to ride the bubble, you know, expanding. And I, I do feel like there's a seismic shift. I know Biden made some comments about uh, AI today. And he said that, like the headline was that he doesn't find it to be dangerous. And I think everybody knows I'm part of this like EAC group that is trying to evangelize the acceleration of technology instead of the retardation of it. Um, I think that, you know, there's uh, a lot of good reasons for that. I won't, you know, sort of try to proselytize here. Um, but I think that, you know, I, I know that there's some powerful, I want to call them enemies, but people with other viewpoints and we should respect them too. But I also think that, you know, this kind of technology is, is so impressive and so important um, that we're, we're close to probably the, the most defining achievement in mankind's history, which is called AGI. Again, going back to my childhood, I read a lot by this guy named Ray Kurzweil, who's, who was and I don't know, maybe still is like a mix of a genius and a quack. Um, you know, probably more genius than quack, but um, Ray also like takes like hundreds of pills every day to try to extend his life, which is probably the quack side of him, but he, he was actually a pretty formative person in, in sort of pop science and also a bit AI. He was also known for the Kurzweil keyboard, which he also invented. So he's a bit of an inventor and a mix of things, and he, he worked at Google Brain for a while. It, it's not clear that he actually was very productive there, but regardless, Kurzweil wrote a number of books about the singularity, and that, that term was actually coined a while before him, but he very much popularized that term. And... Um, the idea of a singularity generally revolves around AGI, this artificial general intelligence. Some people are calling it ASI, artificial superintelligence. And the idea of AGI is that if, if we could make somebody even as smart as the average person in this room, 
Um, the beautiful thing about computers is copying and pasting, right? We could launch hundreds of instances of that person and ask that person to do something, maybe thousands of instances or millions of instances, or maybe even billions of instances, who knows? Um, and if those instances or people or instantiations are you know, human-like, then you know, what are we gonna do? Um, that changes society, that remolds society in a way that we have never ever thought about. Um, we haven't had the opportunity to even you know, imagine it um, as, a, as a possibility. So something like the internet, very big deal, sure, but you know, we've had ways to communicate over long distances. We've had computers before the internet. This is something that's fundamentally different. The idea that an AGI could be created by this like nascent LLM, which I think a lot of people are starting to think um, is going to happen. I, if you look at prediction markets for an, an AGI, they've rapidly narrowed <laughs> their expectation. In Bostrom's book, um, Superintelligence, which is the definitive book on kind of this subject, which by the way is not saying much, there are not many books on the subject that are credible, but I like that book, and I encourage you to read it if you haven't. It's called Super Intelligence by Nick Bostrom. It's a little dated at the moment, but I do I do think it's worth worth a read. Um, you know, basically the uh, the concept is that you know AGI was always 15 years away. Uh, you know, the 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 mean guess from people who are worth paying attention to in the field is that we're more like five years away. And usually, when you when you have a rapidly changing variable like that, most people are or poor Bayesians in that they're they're assimilating the new information very slowly and we could be seeing something much faster than that. I don't I don't of course don't know, but I, I do think that LLMs provide a core functionality of, of the human brain. Uh, I've been talking about it as Broca's area, which is the part of the brain that synthesizes language. If you have a stroke or or I don't know, the right brain injury in Broca's area, you'll actually stop being able to to to, to speak even though the rest of your brain is intact. And we can do things in physical therapy and uh, deep brain stimulation to sort of rewire the brain uh, in a bit, in, in a sense. But Broca's area is really important for speech. And it's important to know that the volume of Broca's area relative to the rest of the brain is fairly limited. So, you know, the question is, what's the rest of the brain doing? And there's a lot of things it's doing. Uh, and I think Jan LeCun says it the best when he says that LLMs lack kind of executive function planning all the things that, you know, kind of make us human. They're very, very, very good at language and they're very convincing. And using other tricks like chain of thought and other tools, you can kind of see that LLMs also have this emergent reasoning, which is, is uh, something that's rather surprising. You know, I think a lot of people were, were really taken aback when they saw large language models, which are really supposed to be, you know, the predict the next token idea. <laughs> You know, that everyone said, oh, well, you know, this is a machine that predicts the likelihood of the next word. That sounds very mundane and tame. Um, but then the emergent property of, okay, wow, um, you know, uh, you've got a, uh, you know, you've got logic. <laughs> um, that's scary. Um, and maybe the next emergent area after more expansion of these LLMs, whether that's in parameter count or actual other tools that are really important, uh, or, or descriptors or, or different sort of pieces of, of software that could work with them, you know, maybe the next area is planning. Um, I've been trying to train an agent, uh, and people are using this word agentic, um, I guess as an adjective, um, uh, trying to train um, software to, to have uh, agency um, or goals and things like that. And LLMs are actually very good for that. And a lot of people, um, there's a Japanese engineer, I'm going to butcher his name, I have to look it up, but he's been writing quite a bit on this. Uh, let me get his name because I want to give him full credit, but I, he and many others, and certainly I can't be the only ones that are thinking really hard about, well, how do we give machines agency and give them sort of an interest in doing something? And LLMs actually provide an unbelievable ability to do that. So OpenAI, if you sort of ask OpenAI, get, you know, my, you know, you are, you know, John and, and John needs goals in his life, what, what are the goals that you would suggest? it very quickly will, will come up with goals. And that's something that, you know, you could then put in, in LLM, LLM again and say, well, well, how would you go about achieving those goals? And you keep recursing. Uh, so the guy's name is Yohi um, uh, Nakajima, and he's on, uh, on Twitter, Y-O-H-E-I. He's probably one of the best people in this space to follow. So if you haven't followed him, it's Y-O-H-E-I, Yohi Nakajima. Jima, J-I-M-A, 
uh, yogi.nakajima.com. He, he writes a bunch of essays. He has a VC fund, I believe, called Untapped Capital. And he's been actually investing, but also writing software <laughs> uh, on, on how, do you, how would you create this sort of agentic model. And again, I, I couldn't understate enough the, the, the seismic shift of, of you know, uh, in essence, civilization. Uh, 